Hey everybody, it's Eddie J on Crypto for Grow My Bag TV, and there is a lot to unpack. Let's start with the shenanigans over at OpenAI. And I talk about this not because it's an AI play, but rather because it is a stock play. Okay? So, no, it has nothing to do with, you know, crypto, but it is a big deal when it comes to stocks. This is how a board of directors should not operate. Um, you have Sam Altman and some other key executives at the company um, reacting to Sam, Alt Sam Altman's ouster as CEO. They brought in now two different people to actually be the interim CEO over at OpenAI. This caused a problem, right? Because the board ousted Sam Altman and told their shareholders at the very last minute before the press release dropped. Now, you hire a board to avoid idiot moves like this. Okay? This these this was an idiot move. I don't I have no problem with wanting to replace your CEO. There's no problem with that. But to do it in such a public and in such a a sloppy way as this, every single one of those board members should be ousted or every single one of the board members that voted for this to happen should be ousted, period. So your biggest, I want you to think about this, your biggest shareholder is Microsoft by far. Let's not even play games. You might as well say Microsoft owns them. They don't, which is why they were able to do this. Well, Microsoft didn't seem to know what was going on during this whole debacle. Understandable. It's not a holding of theirs. It's just a major investment. But the message that Microsoft just sent should have every board member at OpenAI dropping a brick. And the reason why is because They've taken Sam Altman and a couple of other key executives and formed a brand new artificial intelligence research unit. That does two things. The first thing that it does is it says that Microsoft is not going to take the stock hit because one of their investment companies made a, you know, a stupid mistake. So by bringing them in, when I was watching television this morning, just before I turned it off, um, their stock had gone up because of this move. As you can imagine, their stock would have taken a major hit because of OpenAI's shenanigans. But because they said, oh, is that what you want to do? We're going to take these people and we'll bring them over here then. Huh. Now, I want you to think about this. Microsoft now has the brain trust from OpenAI. That's really how I look at it. There might be one or two people that aren't there yet, but how long will it actually be? So I think Microsoft currently has the brain trust from OpenAI. So not only do we do we have our fingers in OpenAI directly, but we also have the brain trust behind it all. <laughs> yeah, what that other, but the other thing that it does by you know mitigating, you know, in in addition to mitigating that that risk of you know taking that stock hit is it also stops this brain trust from saying, oh, that's how you want to play at open AI and going out and starting a new AI company. That's the real winner right there. The new, you know, AI company is Microsoft. Right. And that's not the only thing that hit. Right. You know, Google's AI is is on hold for a little bit. Um, the mess that's going on at OpenAI. And trust me, it's not over. There's more to come out of that open AI story. Then you have X or you have Elon Musk saying that 25 percent of the people invested in X AI are also X shareholders. That's interesting. I find that to be interesting because if I was if I was a shareholder, I might want to get involved in another company. I mean, if he's made me money, I might want to get involved in another company. However, I might actually pause and say, oh, I don't know, because this guy is absent. Right. And then, you know, over it over at X, as if they don't have enough turmoil to deal with his anti-Semitic remarks 
has led to people calling for his CEO of X, Yaccarino, to step down. And I'm sitting back and I'm saying to myself, who here actually thought she ran things over there? Like, are you serious? Are you joking? Are you kidding me? Do you really think she runs anything at X? She might have the title. Elon still holds the reins. To me, those are just facts. So would I would I invest in X? Heck no. That's I might as well go to the bathroom and flush the money. That'd be a lot faster, a lot easier. Then you get to see little squirrel. There's enough squirrel around that company. I would never invest in that company. That's that's a that's an example of how to lose money. You know, the joke used to be if you want to lose a million dollars, you start off with $2 million and open up a restaurant. Now I think the easiest way to lose money is invest in X. But, you know, that that's a lot. Then we have Bank of America, Wells Fargo, and J.P. Morgan being seen as negative by Moody's. Not because of anything that they did. Right. Not because of anything they did, but because the United States seems to be in a weakened position to support those banks. Meaning in my eyes, you know what that says to me? Moody's thinks there's no safety net. <laughs> that's that's the only way I can see it is Moody's thinks there's no safety net. Now, I want you to think about this. Should there be one? Like. Shouldn't if you run a business poorly, shouldn't you just go out of business? And I'm pretty sure those big banks they'll be they're fine. They're fine, right? But if you run a business poorly, shouldn't you go out of business? Should the government have to step in and help you? Right? But I do think that it's going to say a lot about the banking sector in the United States. Something else that we should be paying attention to as as investors is we have a lot of of news happening this week. We have a lot of earnings reports coming out this week, right? A lot of retailers are coming out with their earnings reports this week. We have um, real estate companies coming out with their earnings this week. We also have the FOMC minutes coming out this week. And you know, people are going to be pouring over that like nobody's business because everybody wants to have an idea and be able to put into their calculations what they think the Fed is going to do in December. I'm still of the camp that, you know, they're not going to raise rates. They're absolutely not going to lower rates, <laughs> but I think they'll remain step for right now. I think the, I think the economy is going in a direction that they want it to go to help fend off inflation. That's not to say that we're not going in the same direction for a recession. It's sort of like, you know, Somebody being putting your patient into a coma, into a, you know, into a, a, you know, a slight coma. The reason why is because, well, you have to do things, give the body time to adjust itself, to fix itself. And you want to make sure that, you know, everything is all right. So a, a, a planned recession could say a lot. So we'll see. But I, I think that we're going to be seeing a lot from the FOMC. I don't think they're going to be raising rates, though. Something else that I'm paying attention to is how quickly MasterCard is creating outwardly facing features and services for their clients and customers, as well as working on infrastructure and operations. They're not playing games when it comes to crypto. They've just signed on FeedZeye. Um, they are a software company specializing in anti-crime and fraud, right? And one of the things they specialize in is crypto fraud. So that to me is a very big deal. And it says to me, it signals to me, MasterCard is not playing games. <laughs> Sorry, my nose is stuff. MasterCard is not playing games when it comes to their crypto operations. And that's a very, very, very big deal. What they're saying is we're going to be a part of this connective tissue in the financial industry going forward. One of my one of my viewers, avid viewer, never lets me off the off the hook for anything. Um, he, he will absolutely call me out and say, "Hey, I think you got this wrong." He shares his opinions, all that good stuff. Kind of want to bring that 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 focus over to grow my bag, which, like I said, is technically live. So we could use some people to sign up and bang on it and help us continue to fix it and grow it, but. His comment was, wouldn't it be great if you had credit cards that were that relied on your crypto instead? 
I wouldn't say credit cards. I'd say more like debit cards because I like the idea of moving away from a credit-driven society and back toward a cash-driven society, right? That's what I like. I want to see people get back to financial independence through investment and making moves with money they have, right? Not to say I don't think credit should go go fully away, but I think we have too many people that rely on credit that live off of debt. Not leveraging debt to make money, but living off of debt. And I think that's we need to change mindsets on that. Something else I'm paying attention to, Binance, just a mess. Binance is a hot flipping mess. Um, just more more um, exits, more executive leadership exits from over there. And yes, executives are different than leaders, right? They're not necessarily one and the same. Um, but two people from their anti-crime unit, you know, or division have left. I think, I think Binance has a long way to go before they can fix things. But you know what we should do? We should get into the numbers. Let's see. So I told you how, what you know earnings reports we're expecting. Amber Carmi and Fitch, that's from retail. NVIDIA with all the chips. You have other companies here. Um, Autodesk, Baidu, Best Buy, another retailer, Burlington Store. So you've got a lot. Dick Sporting Goods. So you've got a lot of retailers coming out with their notes this week. That's tomorrow for those guys. So we should be paying attention to that. You have the FOMC meeting meeting minutes that come out. I think, when is it? Wednesday? Da, 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 da. I forget what actual day the meeting, the meeting minutes come out. There you go. It comes out tomorrow at about 2 p.m. And people will be pouring over that like nobody's business, as usual. Um, Fear and Greed Index is at 69. DeFi Llama shows us that the TVL, or total value locked, is at currently at $61 billion. That's, that's upward momentum. I like that. Um, Bitcoin is back at 37,171. Again, we're moving laterally. We've established, and, and we're moving laterally in a way that we're seeing bigger moves laterally, right? So you saw this big spike, and you saw a drop, and then you see it, so it hit, and then there was another big drop, a big spike, big drop, and we seem to be more stably or more, you know, in a controlled fashion, moving up again. There will be another drop, there will be another rise, there'll be another drop, there'll be another rise. Question is, how big will they be? What I like seeing is the fact that we're still maintaining over a, let me see what that number is. Yep, just below 3,500, 35,000 rather, right? So that was kind of a big deal. But for the most part, we're remaining above my 35 to 32 mark. So that means for me, we're in striking distance of 40,000. Do I think that we're going to hit 40, 45,000 by the end of the year? Yeah, I think so. Did you know that we're only 136 days away, give or take, for the halving event for Bitcoin? That's another big deal, just in case you didn't know, in case you weren't paying attention. Chainlink is up 6.84%. Cardano is up a bit. HBAR, you know, Hedera Hashgraph is up. Near is up. Um, everybody else is in the green. But, you know, we're, we're experiencing higher lows right now. So Matic might be in the green, but it's a higher low. The high was like 90, 91, maybe 90, 90 some odd cents. Now it's back at 86 cents. And that's because we all thought oh, but the possibility was there that we could see a Bitcoin spot ETF. Didn't happen. So everybody took their profits and now they're sitting there. But look at these lows. They are higher lows. This is what I'm paying attention to. Solana at 60 bucks. It's still a higher low, right? And that's really what I pay attention to. If you want to look at it from a big board perspective, here you are at 37,184 right now for for Bitcoin at 182 now, just flipped. Um, XRP is at 62 cents. That's pretty nice. For the year to date, up 84%. Nothing to cry about. It's outpacing Ethereum, right? I'm just saying, Solana, still above 500% increase for year to date. I don't know about you, but that's kind of big to me. That's a that's a big, fat, juicy number. 
Looking at Cardano, up 61%, basically on par with Ethereum. And they've got more in the tank. All of these coins in the top 10 have more in the tank. So we should be paying attention to that. Link is right there. Doge up a little bit, but I told you if I'm going to pay attention to something, I'm going to if I'm looking at these two coins, I'm going to pay attention to Chainlink, not Doge. Chainlink has use cases. Doge is still a meme coin. Just saying. Though, though that's my output, from my outlook for that. Um, Polygon up, but only up 13% now. 13% year to date. That's still better than any any bank account you're going to get. I know, right? So it's not it's not a high flyer like some of these others, like Chainlink, like Solana, like Ethereum, like Bitcoin. But I think you're going to see a heck of a lot more momentum coming out of Polygon, especially when you consider how much work they're doing in the in the DeFi space. Same thing for Avalanche. Same thing for Polkadot. We should be paying attention to these companies in major fashions, major major fashions. Looking at Bitcoin Cash. I hear people say, why do I need Bitcoin Cash if I'm if if we have Bitcoin? Because it's up 136%. You still have a bunch of people that like Bitcoin Cash. It's also got a market cap of about $4.5 billion. This is why we pay attention to it. Because that says that people see it as being useful. Kronos is another platform that we should be paying attention to. Yes, they're not up a lot. I mean, Cosmos. But yes, no, they're not up a lot. 1%. They're basically barely breaking even for the year. But I think we're going to be hearing more about Cosmos, which is going to drive them up. Something else that people are sleeping on. Stellar. Same type of technology used as, as um, XPR. I mean, I'm sorry, as XRP by Ripple. Stellar is in that same space. Ripple seems to be more for institutional. And again, Stellar seems to be more for private or public usage, meaning retail us, not banks. Pay attention to these things. Do your own research. Get it together. And by the way, bring your conversation over to growmybag.tv because we're banging on it. We're testing it. And we've broken a bunch of stuff. We fixed a bunch of stuff. But it's going to be the actual use and the public helping us find, you know, things that should be better. Like we know that our mobile game needs to be better. But remember, I have a small team and, you know, we're just investing in this. We're not making money from it. I mean, we hope one day we'll make money from it. But, you know, membership right now and what I plan to have is just membership stay at $12 a year. There are other services that you could purchase. But membership should be $12 a year, a dollar a month. And the reason why, we it's going to help us stop the bots. No platform out there is going to be ever be bot free. I mean, you could, but it would be very stringent, very strict. And we want to be as open as possible. We don't use algorithms. We don't use cookies externally, except for the services that we use. We don't sell information, none of that. We just want to have people have fruitful conversations around investment, money management, and business management. So come on over to growmybag.tv. Help us out. Right? Um, we know we've got we've got stuff that we've got to work on, but we're trying. We're trying, and we're finally putting it out there. All right. Um, we know, like I said, we know our mobile game has got to get stepped up. We don't have an app yet. So we're relying on mobile-friendly um, web development. We're getting there. We're not there yet. We still have errors there. We've been working all weekend to take care of some errors. And we'll be working diligently for the time going forward to do the same. But I think it's time that we stop talking about it and start letting people bang on it. So if you want to help us out, join up. Start banging on it from your desktop. And let's see what we can do. Right? Because I'm tired of you know having... If you look at my account, it says you know I'm in... I've got a problem over it over at TikTok. And I'm tired of having to spread spread everything across several different platforms. So this, I know Friday was supposed to be my last, my last one, but this is gonna be my last one that I'm actually gonna release on other platforms. All my long videos are gonna be released on GrowMyBag.tv, and I hope you come over to see them. All right. This is Eddie J on crypto for Grow My Bag TV. I hope you have a good one. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.